I actually didn't choose to study science straight out of high school. I began my uni journey in the Bachelor of Psychology thinking that I wanted to be a clinical neuropsychologist, but in my first two years of psychology I had taken units in biology, um, in physiology and in radiology and I had the realisation that psychology just wasn't for me. What I really enjoyed was science, so I quickly made the switch, I transferred what credits I could and I didn't look back and it was the best decision that I ever made. Well, during high school, I idolised a neurologist and author by the name of Oliver Sacks, and at 17 I thought, I want to be a neurologist just like him, he is everything I could ever dream to be. However, a close friend once told me that I had my head in the clouds, and that took away a lot of my self-confidence. After that, I didn't really consider medicine as a pathway because I didn't think I could get in, I didn't see it as something that I could achieve. But what ultimately changed my mind to transfer into science at the end of my second year was the words of my partner, who also studies science. They asked me, why not medicine? You have the grades and you're obviously passionate. And I guess that it finally just clicked with me that there was nothing to stop me from getting into medicine other than myself. I finished my degree with a major in physiology and minors in biochemistry, developmental biology and psychology. Um, I didn't actually think too much about setting myself up content wise um, or by how easy that I thought the units would be to score high in. I just chose the units that I researched and thought, oh I really like the sound of that. Um, the best way to get high grades in a unit is to be genuinely engaged in the material because it will make remembering and studying the material that much easier. Um, but I did, of course, check the required prerequisites for Monash graduate entry, um, which is at least five units from a specified list of level two science units. You can find this in the list uh, in the graduate entry admissions requirements page. If you aren't yet familiar, the MMI is the multiple mini interview and the SJT is the situational judgment test. Uh, these two things account for 60% of your entry into Monash medicine. The MMI consists of uh, various stations where you'll be asked questions on topics such as public health, uh, rural health, patient grief, etc. During which they'll examine things such as your communication, your ethical reasoning, your empathy. Um, and the best way to prepare for this is to practice. Many websites will tell you to read widely, read newspapers, read novels and be knowledgeable about everything. But that is a waste of your time and that you can prepare more efficiently by practicing timed interview questions. If you encounter a question that you don't know how to answer, then there's a gap in your knowledge and then you can use that as a guide for what to read about in more detail so you have enough information to form an opinion. In contrast, the SJT more so involves uh, teamwork, professionalism, and involves answering a series of uh, ranked questions on what you think is best for a particular scenario. Um, again, finding practice resources is the best way to prepare, but also having relevant life experience. Uh, this could include having a part-time job or being a committee member as part of clubs. Um, but if you haven't been involved in such things, then I think the best way uh, to prepare is to just talk through practice questions. As for the GAMSAT, the renowned test that everyone fears, um, I actually said it twice, which wasn't wise, um, but don't buy expensive materials. Find friends, other med students, um, where you can acquire some freely available resources. Um, though if you are going to spend money, I suggest buying materials directly from ASA, who run the GAMSAT. The materials from here are going to be most reflective of what you will find in the actual test. Um, and you can get, you know, marked essays for $20, which is quite reasonable. Um, and a lot of other material is actually just much harder than what you'll get in the test and it really can break down your confidence and be a waste of time learning this stuff that might not come up. Um, so Monash actually doesn't require the GAMSAT, which is pretty great, um, though I still think it's a good idea to sit it if you want to keep your options open and be able to apply to other universities. I applied to the GEMSAS group of schools, uh, which includes Melbourne Uni and Deakin, um, but no others outside of GEMSAS. My main rationale was that I only really wanted to apply to Monash and Melbourne, um, and I, it was easiest for me to stay in Victoria at the time, and I thought that if I didn't get an offer, um, I was already enrolled in an honours project that I was actually incredibly excited about. Um, and I thought that I could do the honours and then apply a second time in the next year, and that would be okay for me. 
Um, I did actually receive a Melbourne interview, um, but I didn't get an offer from Melbourne or the other Jim Sess universities. My best help was actually my partner, who is one year higher than me in the medicine program at Monash. Um, they'd very recently done it all before, so I got to witness uh, the process a year in advance, basically. So I started my prep early, um, I got great advice. Uh, additionally, I spoke to other students in science who were on the same path. Um, given COVID, I couldn't really meet in person with anyone, so I did set up phone calls, Discord chats and Zoom meetings um, with other students to practice interviews and games up questions together. But I also highly recommend certain Monash clubs. I'd say that Monash Biological Society, Monash Science Society and Monash Uni Medical Union of Students or MUMIS are the best uh, places for advice and support for science students specifically. Um, MUMIS especially as they're actually all students who are already studying medicine so they have all the inside knowledge, they've done it all before and you'll get a student's perspective. First and foremost, study efficiently and study passionately. So study only what is directly relevant, enjoyable and improves your performance so that you have time to focus on other aspects of your journey including your interview, your GAMSA and your personal health. This will help you get the best chance uh, of getting into medicine. Some other important tips are speak with others going through the same thing. They'll understand you and you know if they've already gone through medicine they'll have great advice. Next, if you're a rural student like me, apply for the Dean's Rural List. This will help you uh, get into medicine as it adds a bonus to your entry score. Um, I did this and ended up being offered a bonded medical place, which I'll let you do your research on what that is, um, but I think it's a great idea. Um, be social, make time for yourself and the things that you love. But here is the most important part of this point. Don't feel guilty about it. Rest is not true rest when you're too busy thinking about all the other things that you should be doing. I was guilty of doing this and it certainly didn't make my life easier. Next is to clear your plate and to not be afraid to ask for help. So this isn't just limited to study if you need uh, say a tutor, um, but also other aspects of your study life balance. So ask your parents if uh, you know they can let you off some chores and give you some alone time or if you're a club committee member, um, don't be afraid to admit to your colleagues that you're short on time and you need help on a task. Um, you know, it's absolutely okay to have energy lows as long as you give yourself recovery time. People understand and generally when you ask for it they are more than happy to help. Not only will each of these things help you get into medicine but they will also help you while you're studying in medicine and into your career as a doctor.